Well, I am here with my buddy, Monica Arndt. Many of you are familiar with her. She says she gets recognized in Lowe's now when she goes into <laughs> Lowe's because she is the queen of rooted cuttings. And we're not gonna go into the methodology a lot of that today, but we'll put a card up so she can show you how she does it and all of your secrets and tips and all that kind of thing. Uh, but we have taken cuttings of, well, she just brought me a bunch of these sweet little, she sent, brought me some before, and she brought me more today of these sweet little lemon cypress. Who knew you could root those I cuttings? I know, they're supposed to take a year. It took me three and a half months. Because as I said, she has superpowers. <laughs> and her, her, your superpower is, you can root cuttings of almost anything. Well, it's fun to do. It is fun to do, and she does a great job at it. So we, she has done myrtles for me, boxwood. What else have we done? Uh, some geraniums, some rosemary. We did rosemary one day. Yeah, we've done lots of rosemary. Yeah. Uh, oh, the fun thing you did for me, I wanna make sure to show you guys, is Catoni Ester. I, I wouldn't have even thought of that. And it's it's a really cool one. And and a lot of these I want to do, obviously, for candidates for topiary, but not necessarily. If you just you know want to create some cuttings so that you can put them in your garden, that's great too. But Monica is here very specifically today because I am depending on the kindness of strangers, or in this case, the kindness of a good friend, because she's going to uh, help me take a bunch of cuttings today of some begonias that I love, some dragon wing begonias, or angel wing begonias, regular begonias, but some that are in a certain color that has been a favorite of mine. And I, I overwinter the big pots every year, Monica, but I want some that I can spread around and actually put out into the landscape. So because I don't have a lot of space, um, I would think anything fleshy like begonias or- Begonias will root. Yes, pretty, they will. Pretty easily. Obviously, coleus, which yes. roots very easily. Uh, but what are, what are some other fleshy annuals um, that people could take cuttings from now and root themselves? Oh, gosh. Portulaca would work. I'm trying to think what else would work. What about um, angelonia? Angelonia would work. This is a great time of year to do cuttings. You know, things are at their peak. They've not quite gone to seed. Um, which yeah. is a you know important right kind of and so and it's cooler temperatures at night and cool warm enough during the day so it's a good time of year this is perfect yeah and it's also a good time to take the cuttings themselves when the plants aren't so stressed right. out now ideally Monica and I would have done this a little bit earlier in the day when things were still really hydrated yeah. but I think we're safe it's still pretty cool right. out so I think we're pretty safe and obviously as soon as we take cuttings, grab grab your uh, your cutting, your cutting accoutrement, your bucket and, <laughs> and your pruners. And you obviously want to make sure that they're sharp, that we, you know, have alcohol wiped them so that they're they have been disinfected. But you know, really I think it's a wonderful way to practice thrifty gardening because it can be really expensive. In addition to being hard to find, it can be really expensive to replace annuals every year that you wanna use in your container plantings or in your landscape. So here we go. Here, here is, is my first overgrown pot. Oh my gosh. And what I've got, here's a tip you guys. I've shared this with you before, but it's one of my favorite tips because I love in terms of a shape and and a form of a container planting, I love big saucers and they can be really expensive. So if you can find them, and now is a good time of year to look, this is the top of a bird bath. Oh, wow. And it's got, and obviously it's got a drainage hole in yes. it to set it on top of its pedestal. But if you bought this as a planter, it would be really, really expensive. So this is another thrifty gardening tip. Get the top of a bird bath. Some of them can be fluted. You know, some of them can be rather ornate. I like the simple ones, but they make great saucer plantings, whether you put them on the ground or this one I've got elevated on one of my plant stands. So. 
you can see that mine, it's pretty overgrown. That's <laughs> okay, that gives it good drainage. It gives it good drainage and yeah, but it's also, it's gotten really lanky. And so instead of just cutting it back to take advantage of it flushing out with the cooler temperatures of fall, I thought as long as I'm gonna cut it back, I'm gonna have you here to take cuttings. So I've got a bucket and my bucket has a little bit of water in it. Yes, very good. But I often see you take cuttings without any water in your bucket. Well, some things will harden off, like cinnamon geraniums, for example, can sit without water okay. and harden off, callus off at the bottom a little bit. And I mean, not everything can do that. Rosemary can sit uh, for a little while. Probably the begonias need water. But you know what? I bet that that would be true if you're wanting to take cuttings of your pelargoniums. Yes. I bet they need to callus off a little they bit. They should probably callus off a little bit, otherwise they're, you know, it gives them a little bit of hardening, yeah. hardening off. And I, this year, I, I, I've just fallen in love with pelargoniums again. I, I don't know why. They're an old fashioned plant, but I just have really loved them. And I love, I think I love the way they look against evergreen. So it's another thrifty tip if you want to increase your pelargonium collection. I had a pelargonium theater this year where I had them all stacked oh, up all wow. together. Then taking cuttings of them now would be a, a good thing to do. So these, I'm just going to cut off these lanky guys. Now, you probably know more about this than I do, Monica. So are there any tips that I need to take into consideration? You know, every node it will make roots. Everywhere there's a leaf node uh, will grow roots. So there's quite a few you can get off of a long stem. Or you can just put it all down deep. So, you know, we can take cuttings wherever you feel like it's good for your plants. Okay, so right here, you can see there is another branch getting ready to yes. come out right there. And I want it to continue to grow and fill okay, out. Okay, very good. So how about I take it right there? That's perfect. Okay. And what I have found is a lot of times when you root them, I don't know if it's true. Well, like when you root coleus in water and maybe it would be true of these begonias as well, they get like these little white dots or yeah. little nubs on them that turn into roots. Yes which is fun to watch. It These is. will root fairly quickly, so. So this one, for example, we could cut it here. Yes. And could we, could we, well, I guess we could cut it there. You could, yes, as long as this part is in the soil. Okay, this it'll, right it'll here. It'll grow right out, okay. you could do quite So a do few. you cut it below or above that leaf node? I would cut it right below the leaf node and right below that leaf node, and okay. then you need to cut the top terminal growth off the very top. Off the top, okay. Because so even, so we could this. use this, even if it didn't have a leaf on it, Right. it would turn into a cutting. So I right. could do it right there. You sure can. Okay. You can put it all the way down and it'll root several places, which gives it some stability. Okay, so. so then when you get this back, just so it'll be easier for transport, I won't go ahead and cut these up. Okay. But you could actually take several cuttings off of even exactly. this Exactly, you're gonna get a lot of begonias. <laughs> okay, so when you say these. cut off the terminal node, are you talking about it's that the, right there? The very, the very top growth, yes, there you go. Okay. That seems... But it'll encourage roots. Roots to grow, yes. but it seems a little bit heartbreaking to I know, I hate that, that too. That old fl flower. So. And then I also, if I've got any damaged foliage, Yes. I'll go ahead and cut that off too, and I'll come back and pick that up later. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of put these, I should have had cleaner water in there, but I think it'll be okay. And you're gonna take, she's gonna take these straight home, you guys, so that they're not gonna be sitting in this water to get, you know, to rot or anything along right. the lines. She's gonna take these straight home and she will work her magic on them almost immediately. So because I'm clipping not just to take cuttings, but for form, all of these really long ones, because these are the, and I don't know that I know the difference. What exactly is the difference between an angel wing and a dragon wing? I'm not wing sure begonia? either. They're, I think the dragon wings may be just a little bit of a darker color. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite begonias, the angel wing. Is this the angel wing right here? Yes. And they will certainly, it'll probably, they'll probably root in a couple of weeks, they'll all have roots. Oh, so, that is, which it, yeah. you know. So easily out of these, I'll be able to get three flats practically. Probably three flats least, of, of yeah. cuttings, which if I bought it at a nursery would be yeah. really pricey. And that would be assuming I could find them. Now, as part of, if I'm remembering correctly, Lord willing, 
and COVID notwithstanding, in my, you know, I qualify everything, but in my QVC collection for uh, spring of 2022, I'm going to have live plants and some of them are going to be. Awesome. Uh, these dragon wing and angel wing begonias. These would make gorgeous hanging baskets. Oh, I think so too. And you know what? If you get these going soon enough, would you be able to even coax some of these into bloom to have them in bloom at the holidays, do you think? Sure. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so there you go. There's another, there is another, um, well, it's, it's another kind of money saving tip because these would be great to give as holiday plants to people for Christmas. Absolutely, because they'll make nice indoor plants. Right, and I'm also leaving these long so that, let me move, take these sunglasses off, so that they make contact with the water. And ideally, you guys, I should probably have my bucket in shade, shouldn't I? Okay, so I'm just gonna cut a lot more of these. And by all means, Monica also likes it because when she comes and she gets she gets cuttings from me to make for me, she also keeps a few for me. I herself. sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly do. So, Monica, tell people what we hope to do next spring with some of your cuttings, if we can. <clears throat> well, I think we're planning on having an open house plant sale. Yeah. Which would be a whole lot of fun. And yes. The, uh, now, there are some things that will take a while, but by next spring, things should be in full growth and read it in well. Yeah. And so for some of you who want to know where we, you can get myrtle starts, yes. uh, scented geranium starts. And this time of year is so much better than the heat of the summer or winter. So uh, this is perfect. This is usually when greenhouse people take cuttings on lavenders and rosemaries for rooting for the next spring. So we can do all that too. So. Oh, that's good to yeah. know. I'm removing some of the foliage at the bottom, you guys. So it kind of doesn't, even though you're gonna take these immediately home, no point in in encouraging any kind of rot or anything. Right. So I'm just removing removing those. I mean, they look pretty. They would. This would be a pr just a pretty cut bouquet. Oh, absolutely. If you, if you wanted to bring them in and just keep them in your windowsill. I mean, look at this kahuna. Ooh, beautiful. Yes, isn't that great? Yes. So it's this kind of pinky red that I like because it can read both ways. And I just, I love that color palette. And the more, um, I, I don't, it probably has to do with the quality of light. Do you think maybe in oh, more yeah. sun, it's a deeper color and a little pinkier when it's in a little bit more shade. Now here, and I'll keep going on this a little bit later, but I've got some, I've, I had some just regular old cushion begonias mm -hmm. and those I imagine you could start to. You could, those are, you can also do those smaller ones. Is that the smaller ones mm -hmm. for yeah. seed or starts? But yes, you could, absolutely. So as long as I've got them here and I need to cut them back anyway, these have gotten a little bit overgrown and lanky, plus I can cut off some of the blemished foliage that succumbed to the heat, but why not? Right. Because I would help not, you. Not? I would help you, Linda, but you're the one that does the shape, <laughs> the shaping, you know, for your bush that's left here. Right. So. And so I kind of know what I want it to look like for this fall okay. because I'm going to have another another garden tour but I'm going to let you because we're going into the woody cuttings now we're going to go into the potage and she's going to take some cuttings of some olive trees oh, yay. so okay. let's head that way and I'm going to put this bucket over here in the shade don't trip over my hose I've been watering today is a big work day Monica lots of stuff is going on in the garden today. I love that. So, now it would be really easy to take cuttings of all of this coleus and that roots so easily in water, I don't even think I need to, you know, mess with giving those to you. But if we wanted to take a cutting of some of the rosemaries, we could do that now. Um, so Monica, if I wanted to take, I'll let you do this. If I wanted to take, and by the way, you guys, these are starts that Monica 
brought me, was it in the spring yeah. or in early summer? She brought me these and I'm, they've grown so much, I'm getting ready to plant them in this urn. Again, part of my QVC collection. But she's gonna take some cuttings off of this to take back Very and, good. and root. So I'll hold it if you wanna take the cuttings. Well, so do you wanna shape it into a certain shape? Or? Not necessarily, you just okay. go for it because I'm gonna plant oh, it in here and it's so gonna go to the greenhouse. So you what, that, that's what variety blue. is this? Tuscan? I'm pretty sure, you can tell by, I can tell by the fragrance and the softer leaves is Tuscan Blue. Hill Hardy's a little bit uh, firmer leaf, not as fragrant, this is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And see the new growth right here, this is what roots. There's, there's woody, growth right to here, but just for looks, I'm gonna cut it off okay. down here. You don't have to pinch the terminal growth on rosemary. You just pull the bottom leaves off and I'll put it in a rooting hormone and I have several different varieties that I use. And the woody part will take longer to root than the new growth. So I'll probably cut this off when I get home. Okay, but so. you you don't have to have water in your bucket for that. No. Okay. Okay. Well, go ahead and take several cones okay, off of this good. because a lot of it is getting a little bit tall and lanky. Okay. So take whatever you want cones it off you the want. Top, yeah, take it off the top. Well, take if you it want wherever it to you thicken up. We'll cut it down here and it'll okay. branch out from there. So now an, another good reason to take some of these long semi-straight stems is because we can make topiary out of them later. Exactly. Okay. These are beautiful. Tuscan blue makes a beautiful topiary because it's a straight stem. Do you think that the ones, I'm wondering you guys, if you know, tell us, the ones that are sold around the holidays? Those are uh, not hardy, for one thing, and they do, tr they're tr they transition poorly. Okay, do you, are, so, so they're not Tuscan blue. Tuscan blue's hardy it, to zone? It's up to seven now. I mean, we're, really? our zones have moved up. So yeah. uh, the ones that are topiary, say for example at your uh, local hardware stores are usually a trailing variety a massive garden uh, ground cover type rosemary that they just prune very sharply oh interesting and, yes and they'd go vertical. carpet and they then they just topiary them into a really sweet shape usually the christmas tree shapes is what i'm talking about yeah but they don't uh they don't make it very long. I mean, that's kind of sad. It is kind of sad, yeah. they don't. But you can enjoy them while you have yes, them exactly. and throw them on the Barbie when you're done. <laughs> and yes, yeah, and they good. do last longer than a bouquet of fresh flowers. Of fresh flowers. Yes. So my, my, actually my favorite variety, here's my, my sad tale. My favorite variety is actually a Southern Living plant collection plant. Called, it's called Chef's Choice, which is just wonderful on so many levels. And I had it growing here for three years with the most magnificent border and then the Arctic blast. We got blasted, Oklahoma got blasted yeah. and everybody lost rosemary. Yeah. It didn't matter what kind it was, where it was, it was just one of those freezing, uh, thawing things that was hard. Rosemary usually doesn't make it if it sits in water. And that was more of the, be way below, 14 below zero. Yeah, we just can't handle yeah. that. That goes way beyond a zone yes. seven, a zone seven garden. So whether or not you want to risk it again, I guess is just your risk tolerance. So I enjoyed that. And, but now I put my chef's choice in pot so that I can bring it in because I couldn't bear to lose it, to lose it again. And I'm going to try some of this Tuscan blue in here. Okay, I'm going to give you maybe a couple more cuttings of this. to take with you. Okay, so there okay. there you go. And some of this, you guys, if we do do a little plant sale open house, which again, I'm not making any promises because there are just so many unknowns right now. We talked about doing it this year and that was not a possibility, but if we can sometime, it will be, we'll have to limit the number of people that could come. Uh, but we'll do kind of hopefully a garden tour and a plant sale. So yeah, yeah so we'll, you could get starts for, um, for some of your topiaries here. Okay, now I'm gonna get out of the way and I'm gonna let you come back in here. This is not sweet olive. This is, I, don't, I actually don't know what variety it is. I'm getting ready to transplant it out of this pot and put it in one that's not broken. But I also really want a more contained form 
here I want to cut back some of these long ones so that next year when I bring it out of the greenhouse it is bushier. So I'm going to switch places with you Monica. Oh very good. And work your way on that one and Great. tell me what your procedure is. So these are not too woody. They're woody down here. See how they're woody down here? These are going to root beautifully. And how long of a topiary do you want? Do you want me to just start? Yeah, I, go? I say just start clipping. Okay, well this will thicken up then from the bottom. We'll do it right here. We're not going to cut the terminal growth on, off on this. Usually if it's going to flower and seed, you want to cut the terminal growth off. These are beautiful just like they are. They're kind of like the rosemary. You don't have to do that. So now let me ask you a question. If you did cut the terminal bud off, it would push it would push out it at would, the top yes if so, that's what you want for a topiary yeah so if you okay. want for a topiary you might want to go ahead and cut off the yes, terminal bud is good. that right okay yes. so let's Bad. just pretend okay Excellent. so i'm going to give you that <laughs> okay but here you cut and i'll put them oh, in your bucket great okay super this is fun and by the way this whole area is a mess back hidden here don't judge me because this is one of the things that's getting an overhaul today let me pull it this way and by the way, Monica, this does produce, and some of them come, some of the cuttings, if you want to make them already branched at the top, that's fine too. Oh, okay. So that some of them would be even like further along on their way to becoming a, a topiary. To being a standard. Okay. And from a, an aesthetic standpoint, some of them I like to be a little, little bit lankier and have more of a like a form maybe that they would have in Greece or in the Mediterranean or in you know North Africa um, but some of them I sometimes do want a traditional classical you know topiary form how are we doing we're doing great you can just keep on keeping on and so when Monica brings them back to me once they've rooted. Then she just you, she just recycles. What do you recycle the like four inch cell packs and stuff to root them in? Yes. And then if I want to turn it into a topi or whatever, I'll put it in something a little bit more you know a little bit more elevated. But what I like about working with Monica is that um, I can give her you know my plastic pots nursery pots things like that because you press them into good use don't you yes i do they don't they are very good recycled back to uh you know they're they don't wear out that's good to have so if you're seed starting and get an, another money saving tip just try to keep the integrity without them crushing or things like that so that you can just reuse them do you sterilize them you do you just <clears throat> usually just soapy water is good you know would would work just great to well, keep the bacteria down. I don't actually have a problem with any of that in my greenhouse. I have a hobby greenhouse and I don't have too much coming and going. So I do take care of starting new things in one area and I don't usually have any issues with okay. it. So. Well, I'm, we're gonna take some more cuttings of some things for you to take home, but I do wanna do a little commercial here because even though you said it's probably already just about filled up, but Monica at uh, Will Rogers, um, Will Garden, Rogers Garden Center, Garden or, Center here, which is about 10 minutes from my house. Yeah. You do? I'm getting ready to do a program on herbal tea blends, which is another one of my passions in life is herbal tea. I've got a greenhouse full of herbs. That's what I've been doing. But so I'll be doing a program where you make your own tea blend, and I'll have herbal, I'll have tea plants, lemon verbena. <coughs> um, scented geraniums. Scented geraniums. I've learned that they go in tea, so I'm drying scented geranium leaves to see how they are in tea. That should be great. Well, she has promised to share her secrets with me so I can pass that along to you because, again, we're thinking about economical Christmas gifts, things of yes. that nature. I'm going to send her back with lots of scented geranium cuttings and plants so she can just increase the bounty for next year and I just so appreciate it. But one more thing, because I, I, I know some of you are, are so, you're just green with envy that I have a friend like Monica, <laughs> who's talented, she can do all of these things. But if you don't live in Oklahoma or it, it really doesn't matter where you live, 
contact your local horticultural exactly. extension center, your public gardens, you know, let your fingers do the walking and start calling around to see if there are any resources, if you've got ag schools. Yes, uh, ag schools, um, a great resource. Because there might be students there, there might be faculty there, there might be greenhouse workers or whatever that have the resources and the knowledge who would happily like to earn some extra money over over the winter months by rooting your cuttings and gifting them back to you or giving them back to you because hopefully you'll be paying them um, next season. So it's just like a, a multiple win-win all the way around. It helps people that have seasonal affective disorder that they can play in the dirt and start those kind of cutting things. And you also spread the bounty. So if uh, we like to share cuttings back and forth because she, you have things I have and, and vice versa. So it's a wonderful resource to tap into. Don't be hesitant to just call around and say, is there anybody there that would like to earn some extra money? Exactly. I, They'll know who they are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would highly recommend doing that. Thank you, my friend. You're um, welcome. Enjoyed it. I will be. I will be in touch, and we've got a lot more. We've got a lot more clipping to do. Okay, here very go. good. <laughs> well, here is your fashion epilogue and my outfit du jour. My sunglasses are Lucky Brand. I got this at um, an outlet store in Dillon, Colorado many, many years ago. Um, my wonderful earrings, these are called Mille de Fleur, and these are part of the Orchard Jewelry Collection designed by Janet Mavick, and I'm gonna be doing more about her a little bit later. We have known each other for years, and all of her jewelry is garden-inspired, as is this wonderful little bird bracelet that I've got that is just great for layering. Um, my bracelets belong to this one. I just, I love this sweet bracelet. This belonged to my second mother and this blue one belonged to my sister. That was a gift from my sister. So that's my little um, bracelet ensemble. Um, my t-shirt. My t-shirt is Madewell that I got at Nordstrom Rack. This great jacket that Stuart said, man, that's got a lot going on, um, is a brand called Summer of Love. And this was a thrift store find. I like it because it's got kind of a Oh, kind of a Coco Chanel look. And it was a great thrift store find from a consignment shop. Um, my britches are thrifted. These are Calvin Klein's. My belt I got off of Amazon. My shoes are, what are the brand? Uh, Mark Fisher. I believe I got these off of Amazon also. So there you go. There is my outfit du jour.